Hi, everybody. So welcome to this week. We're going to be focusing on a very important subject in social media management, something that's become more and more important each year, um, having a strategy for tragedy. And today I have with us Mary and Kevin from Aim Clear, and they are the authors of an article that you were assigned to this week, how brands can be prepared for terrorism when it comes to social media community management. So not the most pleasant subject to talk about, but thank you, Mary, and thank you, Kevin, for joining us. And Mary, why don't you go first and just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do for Aim Clear, and then Kevin, you can do the same after Mary. Sure. Hi, everybody. Um, I am. I've been working at Aim Clear for almost eight years. I was employee number four. Um, got this job shortly out of college with a background in communications and marketing. So this was my first real job, and I got quite a crash course in everything digital marketing, especially in those first first couple of years before we started growing. Um, brought Martha Stewart onto Facebook ads in 2009. Um, since we worked with companies like. Airbnb and uh, large auto brands uh, in social media. And so I've moved from social media director to social ads director to now I'm doing, um, I'm the senior creative strategist doing audience creation and um, creative for, for brands across, across the digital web. So search, social, um, content, all that kind of stuff. Awesome. Kevin, what about you? I'm a social account manager here at Inclair. I've been here almost three years. I do a little bit of everything. I do some social ad production, ad creative, a lot of community management, a lot of content writing. And uh, prior to coming here, I worked for in politics for almost a decade where I was a press secretary and communications director and had to deal with um, not necessarily too many tragedies or emergencies, but a lot of sort of unanticipated crisis situations that cut my teeth pretty well in dealing with this sort of thing. So I think you're the perfect person to collaborate with us on this subject. So both of you, on a scale of one to 10, um, how important is it for a brand to have a crisis um, crisis plan for social media because we live in this era of where it's kind of the new normal things like the orlando shootings and the paris you know events that happen tragic events and kind of have to you know be on the front lines of social media so on a scale of one to ten what would you say how important is it for a brand to have that in place well i think based on what you said like it it is the new normal so it's up there you know right right near a 10 and and the reason is we have to you have I have to understand that it's hard to think clearly and strategically in the midst of a developing crisis. Um, because, you know, as a CM, you could also be caught like right in the middle of it if it's something that's happening at your workplace or at an event. So when you plan ahead and start to think about here are the things we might have to do, it gives you a chance to look at them um, with a calm and a clear perspective so that when you're in the heat, you can fall back, back on that you wouldn't otherwise have if you didn't plan for it. Mary, what about you? Um, I echo Kevin's sentiment, of course, and I think that over the past couple of years, it's been clear that tragedy doesn't just strike airlines or large buildings or even just government buildings, and that's a really sobering reality. And so if a brand has a social presence, uh, it's imperative that they have at least a, some sort of plan in place for when tragedy strikes. You know, it seems obvious, you know, right now that brands need to have this in place. And it, it seems like for larger brands, it's, it's a must. I mean, it has to be on that checklist. But for small and medium sized brands, it might be something that, okay, yeah, we, we know we need to do it, but it just never gets done. So what advice would you give to a small to medium sized business um, in having something like this in place? Uh, I would say to start breaking it down into steps. Like the very first thing you can do is just put a structure in place determine um, who has the authority to go ahead and post in the channels during a situation like this. Um, who needs to approve posts? You have to think about that too. Um, is it that your boss, do you need to get legal involved? And then also if you just catch out some trusted information sources, whether it's police. I think we made, maybe we lost Kevin a little bit. Mary, you wanna pick up on that? 
Yeah, so I think Kevin was um, getting to the point of um, outlining your trusted sources. So is it your, your local news station? Is it the local police department? Uh, I think that we've done a good job in the post outlining at least where to start, especially for smaller brands. When it's a, a giant company, um, like you mentioned, they, they probably already have a lot of this in place and a much more structure. They have legal teams, they have a PR division, they have a whole like separate comms division. So for, for bigger brands, this is probably already in place. For smaller businesses, uh, like for example, like a local mom and pop movie theater or a nightclub, you need to under like think about think ahead on like what are the smaller things that you can do, and that's really outlined in the post. And whether it's the bare minimum of being sure that all scheduled tweets are just paused or removed, and making sure promotions are are paused at, at that time, um, I mean that should be you know. What 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 are the bare minimums that you're gonna do, and and that's it. Like, are you gonna go dark, like, or like Kevin said, what sources do you look to, to um, repost or point people to other information if you're not gonna be the ones taking over that. Okay, great. So in the event that you don't have a plan, whether you're a small, medium, large brand, I mean, it's. I mean, the largest brands, as we know, many of them don't have a plan. So what if you don't have a plan? What, what do you do when something happens? Like, what, would, what advice would you give? Uh, the first couple of things I would think of are, one, are we part of any type of an industry association or some type of umbrella group that might have something like this prepared ahead of time um, that they can help us out with or even just have the staffing resources or the knowledge base that they can contribute and that I can get in contact with and ask for help. The other thing I would think of too, there are a lot of solo and even agency experts who specialize in this exact thing in very um, high leverage, high stakes crisis communication. And there's someone that you can contract with on a really quick as needed basis to get you the help that you need to get you through that initial rush of the situation. Okay, great. So what are some of the common mistakes that you see brands making when maybe it's just their plan is off or they don't have a plan when some situations happen? I think one kind of common mistake is to, as you're planning, assume that you have to have a detailed plan for everything. Um, there are some situations that, you know, we can anticipate because unfortunately they do happen, shootings, bombings, hostage takings, things like that. But if you have that, that basic structure in place of who's going to post, who you can trust for information, making sure you get things right, who has to approve things, that can flex to uh, whatever unanticipated situation that you're in. So I would say trying to over-prepare can actually, you can get into sort of a, a paralysis by over-preparing. Over mm -hmm. And certainly we've all seen situations where uh, a brand has continued to post or promote something on social after after tragedy has struck and then and people point it out and say like, oh, is, isn't this insensitive and callous? Not to say that those ever kill the brand, but community managers are on the front line and they are responsible for that. So if this is a profession that you're looking to go into, understand that your roles and responsibilities have just become um, much, much greater in in this era um, additionally in tragic situations um, and oftentimes with only a short amount of text to communicate something uh, messaging is really key so being able to communicate succinctly without being um, offensive or seen as callous or um, being seen as trivial is really important so be careful with your responses so they won't be misconstrued so kind of take a step back before um, hitting send on anything like that and looking at it from from other people's perspectives so someone in um you know washington state who is half a country away from where this may be occurring um but they have family where this is this tragedy has struck um how how will they be seeing this and like how will people who you know like may be completely out of the loop read this. So kind of understanding that not everyone's going to have all the information when they read just your 140 characters. So it has to be defensible and careful. And it, um, yeah, it, it has to be something that that is accurate. 
So that brings me to um, the next question. So what are some of the characteristics, if you're a community manager, um, that you would look for, qualities, characteristics, to handle this type of situation? Well, I think what, what Mary was just talking about uh, is really a lot of foresight and empathy. Because you need the, to be able to, to have the foresight and, and understand how people will perceive your message given the, the emotional state that they're, they're receiving it in. I mean, people in a crisis don't process information or won't, um, won't interpret it the same way as if it's a regular branding message. So you have to be able to be able to really predict and understand how they'll experience it and then also empathize with what that is. And like Mary said, make sure that as you communicate, you're taking that into account thing that will offend people because and you have to realize too, the people who are consuming your message might be victims' families, people who maybe know someone who is in the area or who might have been at the event if it's an event. So you have to be able to really see and understand how your entire audience is, is going to read and, under, and perceive your message. I, I think it's also it's also it's also also really someone who is prone to knee jerk reactions. Um, in social, these things, you know, sometimes organic things in social get seen by no one, and sometimes they get seen by the entire world and are talked about for months. So um, even. Even when you're not dealing with a crisis, being someone who, who's not reactionary is incredibly important. That's a good point. So, so oh, I'm hearing background. Can you hear my background? Okay, okay. Um, so that brings to the point, so speed versus accuracy, you know, this is kind of a, it's hard to balance. Like, should you, do you get something out fast? Um, or do you wait and make sure that it's accurate? And I've seen, you know, we've read, you know, there's both sides to it. What do you, what is your opinion? Um, well, we give an example in the blog post about if you're in an active shooter, shooter situation and you, you hear that the, the gunman has been subdued and you post that, someone could die if you're wrong. And so you really have to, I think, emphasize accuracy and think of yourself as a journalist. A journalist's job is to get it right, not to get it first. And because you're the brand, people are gonna to look to you as a trusted source. You really have to get it right. You can't, you can't afford to put something wrong out there and then have, have to spend time recovering from it. And, and in terms of brand value and um, brand perception going forward, a misstatement or misinformation by a community manager in a time of crisis or, or tragedy has far greater consequences than an accurate update that may be 15 minutes after something happens or an hour and 15 minutes after something happens. So uh, as a community manager, you have to think about the brand, um, not just right now or in the next week, you have to think about the brand in the next 10 to 15 years. So one of those traits like Mary mentioned to you, know, you can't be knee jerk about it. You have to make sure that that you get it right, even though your initial instinct may be to rush and post something quickly. Okay. Um, so, what do you think the future holds for what's happening um, with and and crisis and community managers? What What are some of the trends that you see happening? Right, right now, it seems like we're kind of you know reacting as things are happening and adjusting. And what do you see as a trend happening? Well, I think that um, future for community managers, aside from just this um, topic of, of crisis management, um, community management jobs are, are definitely not going to be just handed over to interns anymore or probably even anyone like under the age of 30 because uh, community managers are really the, the front line of a brand and if you have a brand that's worth a billion dollars, you're, you need someone behind the scenes who has a lot of different skills. Community managers in the future will be cross-trained in communication, PR, sales, and analytics. Like they will, their feet will be held to the fire when it comes to revenue for the brand. Um, and even as we speak, like a, a lot of the 
just interaction with the community um, is being phased out by artificial intelligence. So if you think about Salesforce's Einstein that just um, popped up over Dreamforce um, within the past month, um, all of this kind of soft stuff is being taken over by machines and artificial intelligence. So if this is something, a topic that you're really passionate about, um, you're going to be held to standards of sales reporting and being able to um, effectively communicate to, to brand stakeholders as to, as to why this is helping a brand's bottom line. Um, and the, the heroes of community management will really be the ones who can effectively put process in place for crisis um, to daily trolling behavior to um, how to handle and reward brand evangelists. And I think the, the AI and the, and the chatbot thing is a, a unique issue because it's, those are automatic interactions and we have, to, we have to build some type of a crisis management, crisis response intelligence into those as well because if someone is trying to there's an incident at a hotel and someone is tr trying to communicate with the brand through a private facebook channel and they're getting chatbot messages in return it could be wildly off brand given the situation or or it could be completely missing the tone but it also that person may not know they're chatting with an ai and so they could be thinking they're getting help but they're not and so it, it raises kind of an interesting, um, a, a bend on the AI automated messaging, consumer interaction thing that we may not have thought of. Hmm. That's interesting. So what advice do you give to future community managers and social? Just in general, what would you say to, to our audience? Um, I would say watch, try to watch and learn in real time. I mean, whether it's, you know, something tragic and awful like the things we've been talking about, you can see how brands react, or even if it's just, you know, the so-called average everyday run-of-the-mill controversies. I mean, look at how quickly, how, you know, do they apologize? Do they, I mean, just watch things as they happen. I mean, it seems like something is happening almost every day, whether it's um, someone gets upset with how they're treated uh, by an airline or by a cable company, just, kind of as you're in social and doing your, your own social thing, just keep an eye out for, for when they happen and watch how companies respond and try to learn from them. Awesome. Mary, what about you? Um, I, I would certainly agree with that, especially um, in this um, topic area specifically. Um, as, as I mentioned, it's going to be less about what you say and, you know, writing a tweet or a Facebook update um, very shortly that will be um, taken over by, by machines, I believe. So um, if, if community management and um, brand communication is really your passion, you're going to have to think about um, three degrees above that at least, or like three levels above that. So again, like how are you, like what is the plan and what, what is the process and what is um, option A and option B and option C if, if you know, A and B don't work. Um, and as, as I mentioned, this is all going to come down to revenue for a brand. And certainly a lot of brands will say, well, you know, social doesn't do, do that much for our bottom line, but we have to have it because this is the way it is. That's not the way it's going to be in five years. You know, the social team will be held to higher standards and this job isn't going to get easier, though we may have many and plentiful tools that are really smart. This job is going to get harder. So it's, um, it's important for community managers to cross train, um, like I said, in, in analytics and uh, creative and um, communications. Great advice, both of you. So just one more quick question. Um, doesn't have to, have to necessarily do with crisis community management, but can you share with us your favorite social media tool? So I'm, for me personally, I use TweetDeck and my phone. Um, for smaller companies and brands, I, I really like Social Draft as, as a tool for posting and, and scheduling. It's, a, it's really affordable and it kind of does everything you want it to do. But I'm kind of like an in-the-channel girl myself. Mm -hmm. What about you, Kevin? Yeah, I would say definitely TweetDeck, especially if you're doing, uh, if you're building a lot of lists. I know we do that 
here with a lot of stuff so we can build if we need to follow people talking about SEO or PR or social, or if we're trying to follow something from a certain from a conference or an industry event. Um, Tweet, Tweet Deck is great for that. Hootsuite is pretty, works pretty well as well. Um, I would say probably those two are the ones that I use all day, every day. Okay. Well, thank you so much, both of you, for taking the time to be with us and share your wisdom and knowledge. And um, you can both just let us know where the students, the audience can follow you and what, so what social channel they should look for you on. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. It's at Mary Morud. Um, I'm sure Lisa will, will share my name. Yep. I'm already on this because um, it is spelled differently. But you can follow me there, chat me. I, I love to talk to people on Twitter. Yep, Twitter as well, at KWAT, K-W-A-T-T, or uh, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. It's just LinkedIn, Kevin Watterson. Okay, we'll be sure to do that, and I'll put the um, your um, social IDs with your bio. So thank you so much. Have a great day, everybody, and we will see you next week. Bye. Thanks.